Greatest Cards of All Time, podcast number 40. It's Johnny Mize from 1952 Tops, featuring a red back on this offering. Number 129 in the set, featuring Big Cat. The Yankees' first baseman, I would think, most notably um, remembered as from 1949 to 1953 to be exact won every world series title in that uh, time frame during that stretch just unbelievable also played with the st louis cardinals from 36 to 41 and the giants from 42 and then again from 46 to 49 has some impressive stats. I mean, I think this is a household name, especially if uh, you're a baseball fan. Right. Johnny Mize. Should be a household name. I'm still learning as I go. So honestly, I have to say I did not know much about him before we started looking at this card and this podcast. Uh, as far as the card, I just wanted to look at that or talk about that. I love the fact that the guy's holding like four different bats. He's got four different bats. Picture. Yeah, I don't have yeah. that... Um, Written down in my notes, but I definitely want to mention that. Very yeah. cool. Turns out he was kind of obsessed with bats. I didn't even write that down in my notes, but when they'd go on the road, apparently they would take like two trunk fulls of bats, one of them being all for him. He was... And he one liked for the bats, other or he was like he used really different picky. bats. Yeah, picky would use different bats, and apparently about half of what they took on the road were all for him. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Talking about the card is that Yankee Stadium in the background. I think Andy's got the four bats. I think it presents really nice for a landscape card. Uh, looks like he signs his name John Mize okay. also. So yeah. that's worth. Uh, noting right there cool looking card this is actually series two so you know we've been talking about red backs and black backs and i'm still trying to learn you know series one one through 80 it's my understanding all of those have red and black back options i thought after that they went to black back but obviously i'm not right this is series part of series two <laughs> the mystery continues 1952 top series two is actually 81 through 130 so this this just sneaks in at 129 and obviously clearly it's a red back so cool card love it as far as this guy's career probably best known for his offense right I mean, yeah yep yeah. just a stud uh, a specific so there's been there was a three year span from 1938 to 1940 where he led the league in slugging percentage, OPS, and total bases. Wow, yeah, that was when he was with the Cardinals. And, and he also had a batting average leader in 1939. So during that window, he also led in batting average. So you know you see a lot of power hitters maybe struggle somewhat for the, with the batting average, but that definitely was not the case for him. And actually. In 1947, this may still stand. He was the first player to hit 50 or more home runs in a season while striking out less than 50 times. And I believe that stat still stands from 1947. So... You know, obviously a, a very good hitter and didn't strike out all that often either. Yeah, and the numbers reflect that too. Very impressive numbers, especially when you consider he did had have to miss some service time for service time right right 1943 to 1945 military service so you know that was kind of some of his peak peak years or shortly after that i mean yeah. what could he have done for those three years if he was still playing um going back to his early days though i just wanted to talk about a couple things that i thought were kind of interesting when he was a youngster he actually started out uh, as a tennis player and more interested in tennis. Really? He did win a county championship. County champ? Yep. Tennis. And this is a Georgia-born Georgia, Georgia -born baseball player. Another thing that I thought was interesting is apparently he's a distant cousin to another Hall of Famer from Georgia who actually has a nickname. Ty Cobb? Ty Cobb. So I is this the first cool. time I got a question this, right, maybe? Well, <laughs> this may have been one of the more obvious trivia <laughs> questions out there, but yes, I think I'll this is the it, first though. time you got it. So good news there. Another thing that I thought was pretty cool, at a young age, when he's in high school, he's playing for the local 
college varsity baseball team. So at age 15, as a sophomore in high school, he's playing varsity ball for the local college and he's tearing it up. It's not like he's just barely on the team. And, and the reason he could do that apparently it was because they were actually not part of a conference at the time when he was playing with that team you know what do these numbers look like if he doesn't miss a big chunk of the prime of his career i mean he's he's got 359 career home runs and uh What's he got? A 312 batting average, too. 312 batting average, 10 time All Star, National League home run leader for four 2000, years. 2,000 hits. 2,011 hits, 6,443 at bats, and a career war of 70.7. Yeah, to your point. 1,300 you, RBIs, too. Yeah. You know, a very, 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 obviously, just not just solid numbers. These are Hall of Fame numbers, and to your point, Think about those years from 1943, 44, and 45. Yeah. What you could have added to the hit total, what you could have wow. added to the home run total, and just just an awesome one of, player. One of the greatest players of all time, maybe? Yeah, Is I that... mean, he's in the Hall of Fame, and I, that's what that's what it's there for. So, And it's not like this was some charity pick. Um, he, he deserved it. I'm really happy to have this card in my collection. I love 1952 Tops. This one, you get a whole entire border. If you look at the card, you actually get a whole border. Nothing's miscut. Nothing's crazy imperfection on this card. You get a nice specimen of a card, and I got actually a pretty decent deal on this, I yeah. thought. Well, something I've noticed lately, it does seem like 52 tops are they're hot, and they're going up in value and price. They're not cheap to pick up, and you're, you're picking up a Hall of Famer. Yeah, these are these are getting fairly pricey as far as this one specifically. I mean, it the eye appeal isn't bad. I mean, it's obviously got some wear and tear. Uh, the corners are rounded, but to your point, it, it does have the entire border. It's for sure off centered, up and down, left and right. But and the eye appeal is is not bad. Really, really fantastic. It's not bad. The back probably you know maybe the back even looks a little bit better than the front. It does seem like, you know, maybe it's a some, surface, worn, yeah. some surface issue on the card where... It's a little worn all the way around, yeah. But nothing, overall... Uh, nothing you want to send in for grading. No, but no. if you think about the overprinting, again, the overprinting's crazy. These specimens are going to run low eventually, and then everyone's going to figure out, Look. you know... These are not up for grabs all the time. It's already happening. I mean, I'm watching. We watch podcasts all the time. And, you know, recent podcasts. Who's the guy out in California that's like the big shop? Burbank. Burbank. So um, it was that Ohio kid. I can't think of his name. He, I call him a kid. He's pretty young. He was out there actually interviewing the guy from Burbank. And he even made a comment on how his vintage, vintage shelves are kind of empty and they're flying off the shelf when he gets them and he's having a hard time replenishing those because uh people aren't dropping those off to sell them nearly as often as they are modern cars. right because they just don't exist in the same uh magnitude and as when people all get them of these I think modern they... cards you know modern's fun to collect yeah it has its time and place but when you talk about strictly collecting if you want to collect something if you want to invest in something that's actually going to retain value i see it best fit in cards like these i yeah, I love once, 52 tops. You know, I've got a bunch of vintage cards. Uh, cards. I do have doubles on some of them, but I'm less likely to sell my vintage and way more likely to sell my modern. I think once you get that card, you typically appreciate it. You realize there's not that many of them. And those are just the commons, too. When you start talking about a Johnny Mize in a set like 52 tops, now, like you said, you're doubling it up with uh, a Hall of Famer now, a a very well-known name in the hobby. It's crazy that, you know, cards like these are actually uh, still attainable. And it's totally fun to learn about it. And the more young people get in, I do feel like they're going to start looking at, all right, who were some of the players before? I and think they're, they're still very playing. affordable and, and, you know, most importantly, undervalued. I think they're undervalued, yeah. And they're still fairly affordable. I mean, you can pick up a Hall of Famer. You know, this is, what, the price of a... 
a blaster, blaster box. box. I know we make this joke all box. the time yeah. where I get like a 20 or $30 card and go, uh, I could have a, a blaster box that I'm probably going to be disappointed in once I open it up or this card. I would much rather have a card like this. 